Welcome back to Zero Tolerance with the Learn to Burn series with Practical Machinists. Uh, today we're going to cover two things and those two things that every shop has. One is mistakes and two is changes or engineering changes that happen or things that have to be done on the fly. One thing I want to discuss right away is the need for EDM, uh, fast hole and wire and sinker when doing repairs and also uh, engineering changes. Um, and part of the Part of the reason that you have to have EDM to do some of the changes is because the material is typically hardened, and especially in tooling and mold making. And in this particular instance, you can see um, I have some weld on a, on, a, on a gate area. And these particular blocks are P20 and they're tool steel, but they're not hardened. So this particular application will not require EDM. But on another block, which we'll show you, these blocks, a little bit smaller detail, real fine. These ones are 48, oh, I'm sorry, 48 to 52 Rockwell, they're H13. And we had a little mistake here. And this required EDM, uh, not only for the feature, but because it is hard and it, it would be really difficult to cut. This is a great example of a need for an engineering change on the fly on a block that is already heat treated. So it's 50 to 52 Rockwell. And we have a water circuit that travels through this block, which I'll show you in the CAD um, in a few minutes. But what happens is we have a, an in and out circuit. Typically the water goes in and around um, part of the detail and that keeps the cycle time low on a molding cycle. And what we found is our in and out on our mold base is in the wrong location. So we ended up having to make a change this block is hard, we can't just drill through and connect it like we wanted. So what we had to do is go in the fast hole, fast hole through this block. And this is the little insert that came out. We had a fast hole in there to make a start hole. And then we had to go in the wire EDM and open it. And this ended up uh, saving a lot of work and a lot of time by being able to do those EDM processes on this hardened, hardened block. So. All right, here's the water circuit I was talking about. Um, we have an in. Our water, water circuit travels in right here. If you can see my cursor, it goes around like this and then comes out over here. And this is our water circuit. We had an error on the mold base. So we needed to change how the water circuit ran. So what we did, since this block is already hardened, it's 52 Rockwell, is we fast hold through this section we went all the way through the block and then wired out the hole and then we had to do a hard milling or the EDM sinker to put the thread in and we were able to change or reroute the water circuit and save um, save this block because there's a lot of work done on a, on a block like this. I want to talk about when we make mistakes um, in any shop obviously the biggest thing is getting getting past it, getting through it, fixing it, and moving on. Most of the time when people make mistakes, they beat themselves up, uh, especially in the machinist world where we're trying to make things perfect. Um, we've got to look at how, it take, how much energy we want to put into being mad or we're going to get better and we're going to try to focus on what can we do to learn from what, we, what happened and then the next time do it better and come up with a good solution to fix it. For instance, this block right here is hardened we were trying to dust in literally five tenths off of this face on a grinder and look what we did. We made a mistake and put the block in at the wrong spot and we made a big gouge in the part which now has to be welded. Um, so when stuff's hard, you, you, you got to get it welded, laser welded, TIG welded, micro welding. Um, but when they're hard, you have to either grind it uh, hard millet with carbide 
um, or EDM it. And, and usually the EDM is a safer way to do it because if that certain feature that you're putting back in, if it has um, a real specific area, let's say if it has a hole in it, or if it's a hole you're trying to move, this, this mistake we made is, is, is minor, but sometimes something is a major mistake that's only like four thousandths off, which we had on that previous block. Um, then putting it back in with EDM is a, is a safer way to actually hit your number uh, without having cutter deflection because the weld to the hardened steel may be different, different hardnesses and you'll see it in the cut or you'll see it in the grind sometimes. Um, so grinding and, and EDM are usually the, the best ways to work on hardened material. Now, if the blocks are soft, you can go back to the typical machining methods of you know, regular milling um, or drilling. But if um, those features also will have the same characteristics, if the weld is typically will be harder than the soft material. So you'll, you'll end up wanting to uh, burn features back in just for safety reasons also. I want to show you this part. This is uh, an insert that was welded and I'll show you what it looks like here as we take these inserts apart. <laughs> this is the area that was welded on the, the last insert. It was EDM'd back where it's supposed to be and then benched. So here, here's an example of um, a change that we had to do. Actually, it wasn't a change. It was a, an error when we wired out some vent pins on a part. This part is very tiny and it has a vent pin and you can see there's a little ring at the top of that little feature and this part looks is pretty decent even though it's, it's like a it's we're under a microscope so we see a very a very ugly looking piece of plastic but that is a good part or a good vent vent pin and I'll, I'm going to show you the same thing on another cavity of this tool and you can see that there's a flash which is like a little crown on the top of that little boss and that's a flash condition and that's literally five tenths point zero 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 five too big of a hole on that vent pin and we have to go in there with a wire so we end up having to go into that hole i can kind of draw you what i'm talking about the whiteboard's lesson here so the bottom of that feature looks like this and we have a vent pin that allows the gas to come out of that part. And what happened is we made this wall right here. It literally was, I think, eight tenths. Eight tenths too big. My eight's not very pretty. So this hole was too big in the steel and we put a pin in there and there's a tiny gap. And in that tiny gap, the plastic goes in. And that's what that flash was that I was showing you. So using the wire machine, we can bump the walls out we literally bump them out five tenths a side, so one thou, and we put one thou bigger pin in there, and then we eliminated the flash. But the tolerancing is literally three tenths total, so a tenth and a half a side, and now that material doesn't flash when they run the parts. I want to talk about two of the Two of the main types of welding that we have done here in our shop is uh, TIG welding and laser welding. Laser welding, when you have to do small pieces, small areas, has very little to no sink marks. And what I mean, what I mean by sink marks is if we look down here at this, this TIG welded area, on the outside edges where the weld touches the original steel, you'll see, you'll see a sink area. And typically that'll show up once you do a final grind. And you can see this was changed a couple times. And you can see the area where the grinding didn't clean up because that steel is actually sunk in below the surface. So, for example, this piece when we welded it was laser welded. And there's very little sink. You can see a witness of where it was done. Sorry, the shadow of my finger there. But you can see a witness of where it was welded. But it cleaned up very well. When we go to bench that... Um, with the stone, we'll probably end up being like a 600 paper when we're done. You won't see those marks at all. 
I want to show you how we set this up in the machine when we burned it and then cover a couple things about uh, repair. So we ended up having to set this up and burn it. We used our 3R and uh, sunspot holders and fixtures and we're able to take this in and out. So we took it to the welder, brought it back, put it on here and we could literally put it, start the burn and get it done super fast, super efficient. Um, the other thing is, is sometimes you make mistakes that are on the edge of whether or not you want to keep the block or you have to remake it or scrap it, which is really, really hard to do because there's a lot of work. Typically, there's a lot of work that happens um, to get the block to a, part, part, to a point where it's hardened and, and the, the dimensions are right and it's all good to go and that you make a major mistake in, in the EDM department and it happens. So we, it's this part of it, you really want to do it the best you can, double check your setups, and uh, you want it to go fast, obviously, but you want it to be right. Being right is, is more profitable than being fast, um, especially if you only have to make it once. I want to cover the topic of mistakes, uh, just this little section, because I think it's really important. A lot of people want things to be right, and I'm one of them. I want them to be perfect, the first time, every time. In a mold shop, we make a lot of programs and run them once. Um, so machine shops make a lot of program, or make one program and run a bunch of parts. So it's, it's, a, it's a totally different world um, from mold makers to like a production house. So making mistakes is part of a shop. Any shop, no matter what you're doing, you make mistakes. But if you, you've got to really focus and think about how do I get better and not bitter. Um, don't want to, I, I really don't like when people blame other people mistakes are going to happen and you're going to make a comment to someone and then that mis some mistake is going to happen on your end. It's really uncalled for in the shop environment if you ask me. Um, so making mistakes is, is part of it. Let's just expect a mistake to happen, but take every precaution you can to avoid them, especially learning from your own mistakes or someone else's that has taught you. So uh, I just want to encourage you to look past the mistake, learn from it and move forward and don't let the mistakes and, and that stuff get you down and, and where you're frustrated and you can't even work. We have a great relationship with our welder, uh, Nate at ALWS. Uh, one time he was telling me, he goes, I, I made a bad mistake and he was trying to be sympathetic to me and he said, is it a mistake or an engineering change? And basically, if we call it an engineering change, we get to charge for it when we make mistakes the company or where you're working usually has to pay for that. So most of the time, let's, let's hope that we're only making engineering changes, but um, we'll, uh, we'll be realistic and say that we're gonna make mistakes, but we're gonna get past them and it's gonna be all right. All right, this concludes yeah. our episode of Learn to Burn. Um, stay tuned next month for another episode and don't make any mistakes. All right, you got it? Am I good? <laughs> Am I ready? All right, so this, th tune in next week. Uh, nope, rewind. Discuss today is the ability of wire, or ED, no, I don't like it. Uh, oh, yeah. You're going to get that, cut that off. All right, this, I keep saying all right.